Another memory made real. Blake could never make it. The insanity he was facing was already a part of it. In him. His own doing. He couldn't possibly win. He didn't even want to. At least the lighthouse was much closer now. I would have to make my way up there somehow. There was no power to the log lift.
part of you that is in control is in the cabin, dreaming and insane. I don't think I like that. You represent the part of Alan Wake that is capable of rational thought and planning, which is why I'm talking to you. If that part can regain control, then you have a chance of making it. But a part of you wants to give in. There's comfort in the oblivion of dreams. You represent the part that isn't ready to quit and die. Wait, are you telling me I'm not real? You're as real as anything else in this place. So there are two of me? Yes. And the one you called Mr. Scratch, he's me as well? No. Zane, are you playing some kind of game with me? I am not the author of your story. How can you say that when you wrote that page about me and the clicker? It wasn't one of my pages. You directed me to it. You had Weaver guard it. Yes, she was needed. And you needed the clicker. But I am not. What? I don't understand. Ellen, you should keep going. Zane? Zane, come on! Well, that cleared things up. It's 
like learning to control your dreams. There's a connection. You were in my dream. Yes. I taught you. You fixed the foolish mistake I made with Barbara. Keep going. Since we're being so frank here, Alan, and let me just reiterate how happy I am that you've had this breakthrough, I would like to summarize your condition. By all means. And please, just let me know if you think I'm being unfair. All right. Well, let's start with the obvious. The car crash. Untreated head trauma. All due respect to Doc Nelson, but he's hardly a neurosurgeon. I think that the injury has affected you more than you realize. Yeah, I, I have had bad headaches. 
Then there's your history of substance abuse, which, combined with your chronic insomnia, has resulted in hallucinations and extremely poor impulse control. That's a dangerous combination, one which your wife has unfortunately had to suffer from far more than you. I know. I know she has. I don't think I'm exaggerating when I say that you are existing in a state of all-encompassing denial. Your vivid fantasy casts you as a heroic victim and allows you to skirt responsibility for your own actions. It allows you to solve your imaginary problems and dismiss the things that truly trouble you. In your self-serving delusions, your personal problems are assets that allow you to save Alice, perhaps even the world. Dr. Harmon, I... I think that's spot on. I can't argue with any of that. Well, I'm sure I'm stating the obvious. I don't want to labor the point, but, well, um... No, no. I understand. It's important that I face it. Precisely, Alan. You've put so much effort and imagination into this self-deception, but what good has it really done for you? You refused my offer of help, and here you are. Did being so obdurate really get you to a better place? No. No. And did it really help Alice? Was this really the best thing for your wife? Probably not. Probably not. Why don't we find out? You know, I've been talking with her. There's something she wanted you to hear. Oh, hey. That sounds like fun. All I ever wanted was to help you, Alan. I ate all the shit you handed out and tried to understand your pathetic, wealthy white male drama. Until my life consisted of managing your never-ending crisis. I hate you for your childish temper and the arrogance and self-indulgent pride that undermine all efforts to drag you out of the hole you insisted on digging for yourself. I hate you for leaving me in the dark with that insane monster bitch! All you had to do was act like a loving human being for once in your life and stay with me. If your dramatic exit hadn't been more important than making sure I was all right, she would never have taken me. I don't know where you went, but that's okay. I don't want to know. I don't think I'll ever be all right. The only thing that keeps me from killing myself is the hope that I'll never see you again. Ouch. I... I just can't argue with that. I think I should stay here before I ruin what life she has left. I think this is a breakthrough, Alan. I'm really very proud of you. It was nonsense. I knew I had saved her. I'd succeeded in that, and that was all that mattered. What I heard in there wasn't the truth. It was just another toxic mirage. It cut deep, but that made me all the more determined to force myself to snap out of it. I didn't want to be that guy anymore. I had to make myself see the light. writer was mocking me. I was supposed to be calling the shots, but for a long time, it had been the other way around. I had mastered it in the end. I was the writer, and it was just the two of us.
Well done. You have come far, but there's still a little further to go. You must take full control of your own mind. Reject all of the fantasies you have constructed. Yeah, well, I think I can do that. A lot of the stuff I've seen here is personal and ugly as hell. I'll admit it hurts, but it's not fooling me. I know it's fake. Good. You are aware. The part of you bent on self-destruction is not. But you must be careful just because you know the lies for what they are. That doesn't make the danger any less real. I'll make it. I don't have any choice. Here. I cannot come any further, but this will help you on your way. Thanks. I guess. Hey, let me tell you something, Alan. I know how your mind works. You screw up, then you start analyzing it, and before you know it, you start writing all these horror stories in your head. Don't you? Come on, I don't do that. <laughs> yes, you do. I know how it goes. You're a complete failure. I hate you and I'll never forgive you for whatever it was that you did. Oh, man. See? I know you. But, Alan, it's all in your head. It is. They kept coming. I'm not there were too away. many of them. Hordes and hordes of them. Swarming over the landscape, eager to kill. They were coming for Wake, and this time they would get it with sheer numbers.
lighthouse. I was relieved to have made it here, but I wasn't sure what was going to happen now. Zane had left me. I wasn't sure what the Dark Presence had done to him if he couldn't follow, but from now on, I was on my own. Still, he had gotten me this far. I would never have made it by myself. This thing was going to end. It wouldn't be long now. I was surprised by the change of scenery, but not much. I was starting to understand the symbolism, the way the dark place flowed. here. What? So Zane's your new buddy now. I feel abandoned. This is ridiculous. You're not even real. That doesn't mean I don't have any feelings. Thing is, you need to get all rational here. Abandon your fantasies, right? Well, I kind of hate to say this, pal, but I'm one! Fine. You're abandoned. Bye. Al, what I'm saying is the only way you're getting in that cabin is through me. It's one of those kill you darlings things. But hell, you're used to that, big shot rider. Am I right? It was in everything. It was even taking a people like you, turning his friends against him. They were all against him. What does it say about you when you're this desperate to keep yourself from getting better? Here we go! I'm earning a 15% commission! It's great that you first make yourself an imaginary friend, and then you, you can't even get along with that guy! 
Just like that, my mind was clear. Zane had been right. I could think clearly again. 
But I couldn't survive in this place the way he had, and I might not make it back a second time. Leaving this place would be hard. Maybe impossible. It wouldn't take much for my thoughts to stray again. It was too easy to get lost in the dark place. Before, I was ready to curl up and die, let myself slip away. But here I was, the yet unwritten future waiting to unfold before me, a sequel to Departure. My name is Alan Wake, and I'm a writer. <laughs>